From WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News Update. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday, March 28th. Here are your top headlines. At least three children and three adults are dead following a mass shooting at a school in Nashville. And here is what we know so far. Among the six confirmed killed, we know that three nine-year-old children uh, were among them and two school employees. Now, we are also hearing that the shooter was a former student at this private Christian school. Investigators have identified the shooter as Audrey Hale. Police say that Hale had drawn detailed maps of the school, including points of entry. She was shot and killed by responding officers. Moving on now to a bizarre developing story that we're tracking for you this morning. DJ Hernandez, the older brother of former Patriot and convicted murderer Aaron Hernandez, has been arrested for vandalism. Now, according to TMZ, Hernandez threw a brick with a note disparaging the media at ESPN's headquarters in Bristol. We've also learned that Hernandez was wanted by police in Cheshire after they say he tried to charge seven grand on his mother's credit card and then led police on a chase. He is due back in court next week. Investigators in New Haven are busting up a violent gang that's accused of running the streets for years. Police say that they arrested six members of the so-called Exit 8 gang. The group is accused of committing at least two murders and 10 attempted murders, and this is all part of a gang war. Police also tell us that the group sold heroin, cocaine, and fentanyl. And the message is clear. Put down the guns, don't commit violence, and we won't come after you. The indictment charges each defendant with racketeering conspiracy. Two of the members could face 60 years in prison if convicted. We're also learning more this morning about a child pornography case in Plainville. Police spent hours going in and out of a home right at the corner of Seneca and Metacomet Road. And police tell us that the home belongs to a teacher in town, but that she is not involved in the investigation. Now, we reached out to the school district for details, but school leaders declined to comment on the case. Police tell us that they are now reviewing computers and other electronics taken from the home yesterday. Moving you on now to Hartford, where Mayor Luke Bronin delivered his final State of the City address. And, of course, the budget address, which he said is much of the $619 million, will be going towards restoring massive cuts the city was forced to make back in 2016 when it teetered on the verge of bankruptcy. The city will now focus on improving infrastructure and public safety. This budget includes new positions in our Department of Public Works so that our team can better care for our facilities, our parks, and our streets. It includes additional positions for our housing inspection team and our fire prevention team. Now, the budget includes an expanded property tax credit for seniors, expanded hours and programming at libraries and recreational centers, and more housing inspectors. Back in November, Mayor Bronin announced that he would not be seeking re-election. The road to the national championship continues for UConn men. The Huskies are in the final four for the first time since 2014. Along with players and coaches, fans are now getting ready to head to Houston. And we spoke to students who tell us that they've already booked their hotels. The Huskies face the Miami Hurricanes Saturday at 8.49 p.m. And, of course, we have our own team headed down to Houston. Mark, Joe, and Aaron will all be bringing us live team coverage on the Huskies who push for another NCAA championship. And you don't even have to go far for the action. You don't have to necessarily fly to Houston or Miami, uh, or Houston, that is. They're playing Miami. And we're going to have the big Final Four matchup of UConn versus Miami right here on Channel 3, as you see on your screen. And while Husky Hoops is generating a lot of excitement, of course, all over the state, in Hamden, it's all about hockey. Quinnipiac University is heading to the Frozen Four. Now, the last time Quinnipiac made a Frozen Four was seven years ago in 2016 when they lost in the game championship game. The Frozen Four is set for April 6th in Tampa, and Quinnipiac, the number two seed, will be facing off against third-seeded Michigan in a nationally televised game. Scott, it is now your turn. Oh, well, thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at the regional radar. You can see uh, some scattered showers in parts of northeast Connecticut this morning. Uh, not too much of a big deal, but I do want to bring them to your attention. The rest of the state was still dealing with a few scattered showers in parts of northern Connecticut, but uh, we are expecting gradual clearing as we move through the day today. All right, uh, here's, uh, you can see the raindrops on our camera lens at Bradley. 
38 degrees. The roads are wet this morning, so be careful out there. Exercise caution. And a little bit of a break, a little bit of, we're trying to get some clearing taking place in Torrington, although it's going to take a little while. We are expecting gradual clearing from west to east by later on this afternoon through this evening. All right, uh, we are taking a look at visibility. It's come up a bit, which is good news. New Haven, you went in the wrong direction. Five miles of visibility in New Haven, but eight at Brainerd is better than the seven we had just about 20 minutes ago. Nine at Bradley, that's not bad. So not a whole lot of fog out there, but the spray is coming up from the truckers and other cars, so just be careful driving around. Temperatures are cooperating. 36 degrees is the cool spot right now, and that's in Salisbury and in Torrington. We've got low 40s elsewhere. The typical overnight low is about 32, so we're doing better than that. And there's a little bit of a breeze out of the north, anywhere from 3 to 10. Uh, kids, you will be outside for recess, I think, today. Uh, depending on where those scattered showers set themselves up by late morning into the early afternoon. But I think for the most part, you will be outside for recess and for the ride home. We should start to see some partial sunshine from west to east. So satellite and radar confirms uh, again. Let me just widen out the shot. An extensive amount of cloud coverage out there for you this morning. You can see the clearing taking place to the north and west in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire. All of that is moving in our direction on a northerly flow. So let's take a look at early morning future cast. 10 o'clock, it's still cloudy cloudy here chance for some passing showers between 10 and 2 and then this evening it's clear and uh, temperatures will be dropping into the upper 20s low 30s so a kind of a chilly night tonight tomorrow's a beautiful day with high pressure and control temperatures topping out in the low 50s tomorrow now tomorrow night here comes a cold front with some scattered rain and some snow showers you can see it passing through the state this is around 2 a.m very early Thursday morning. So it'll start after most of us are asleep. It'll end before most of us wake up. And that's the good news. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. But in the meantime, try to enjoy today. That's all uh, that area of low pressure moves out. Futurecast cleans us out. This is tomorrow morning. And then here comes that front. This is Wednesday night around 11 o'clock, and it's over by very early Thursday morning. Today's daytime highs climb into the upper 40s. Cloudy start with afternoon clearing. Sun is up at 641. Sun sets at 712. You will see your seven-day forecast on the screen right now, 53 degrees. Tomorrow, beautiful day tomorrow. Uh, again, a chance for rain or snow shower Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Thursday looks good. And then Friday, a chance for rain showers. Uh, in the latter part of the day, Saturday looks damp with showers and windy conditions with a temperature of 65 degrees. It's going to be a mild day and then a better day in terms of sunshine for Sunday, but it will be cooler by about 10 degrees. And then Monday, 60 degrees with partly to mostly sunny skies. So that's a check of your early warning forecast. I'm meteorologist Scott Haney in the Early Warning Forecast Center, Channel 3. Appreciate you watching. Nicole, will send it back to you. All right. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning into Eyewitness News. And remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy. Stay positive. Thank you.